Hello, I'm Andy McDonald of Queensland Museum Network and here I am again at Cobb Co Museum in the factory and today I want to talk about something I often get asked about by the public. They want to know what the bearing is inside a wagon wheel. So I thought I'd go through a few samples that we have here and talk about the development of the bearing. Now, this is a different sort of axle that the bearing lasted longer. I'll just turn it around. This was nicknamed the thousand mile axle. So instead of lubricating every 100 mile or 80 mile, this lasted for a thousand miles. It had a reservoir that kept oil in here and the box simply swiped it. And it was like a, a reservoir of sorts. You'll notice too, there's a seal, a leather seal in here to prevent, and also this shroud or collar this is a collinge axle with that pattern. And then here we have another leather washer and that's to prevent the oil running out and also dust going in or mud. Now to make those, those particular uh, washers, for instance, larger ones like that, they were made with this tool. So this is basically a trammel cutter, it's cutting or a fly cutter, you can change the dimensions and it cuts a donut out of a flat piece of leather. So that's one I've, I've cut just as a sample. Uh, there were also later on presses with different sizes to press them out. So how do we get the cast iron box into the wheel? Because it is, it's in there and it's fixed in there. The early way to do it was to carve that out. There's already a hole bored into the hub and you mark it out into an appropriate circle and then into it with a gouge. Now this is an in-canal gouge, which means it's beveled on the inside and we can cut a parallel hole. So these are just fitted very carefully like that. And once the box is in, they are wedged and you can look at most old hubs somewhere, you'll find wedges been hammered in to the woodwork. They retain, they pressure the box to stay in there, but also they align it slightly. Now, later on, there was machinery to do this. As you can imagine, steam engine powering a workshop. But we have a really good example of an intermediate tool. So boxing the wheel is the process of putting the box into the hub. This machine is called a boxing engine. It was made in America, a nice little bit of kit. The wheel is clamped into here. These dogs clamp the spokes and it's centered by these three pins until you align the center of the hub. The, the wheel's out here. You wind the handle so the whole wheel is turning around a fixed point. And if you look here, there's a cutter, a cutter bar, the same as the tool steel from a lathe. And as you wind the wheel, the cutter protrudes through and machines a, a hole which can be tapered through the hub. So that's an intermediate technology. But later on, of course, there were quite substantial machines to bore the tapered hole. So the industrial version of the boxing engine, quite a substantial piece of kit and was turned by a flat belt and an overhead shaft. And then once the hole was made, the box was pressed in with a huge press. So this is the, the sort of machinery that was used towards the end of the 1800s uh, in wheel making factories. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you wanna see more background videos from the museum, go to our website and follow the Museum at Home link.